it's just a thought. <laughs> you like that song, do you? Yeah, you like the idea of being used for your body? Yeah, I do. Because <laughs> I have a really nice one. Anyway, uh, body. Who's that? What is it, closed captions? The heart of thinking? <laughs> Anyway, so it is nice to be here, and uh, of course you guys are happy. Are you happily married? You two are like hugging and greeting. Extremely, how, how long has that been that you've been married? A week. A week. <laughs> <laughs> so a will get better. Uh, is it hot in here or is it just me? I think it's Joan of Arc was the last one to get away with that line. Anyway, uh, wow, that wacky Seattle school system is really working for you if she got burned. Anyway, uh, you've been married for how long now? Really? You're, you're, you're kidding that you've been married a week. Okay. So is it still kissy kissy and making love with the lights on and stuff? Hey, be quiet. It's hard to keep that car door open. Can't get him. Where'd you meet him? Where'd you meet him? Save me a trip to the therapist. Where'd you meet him? Vegas. <laughs> Were you sober at the time or did you win in a slot machine or you really met him in Vegas? You were what were you doing at the time? You lived there, so you didn't meet him at all. I just, cause I hear, is it true the locals in Vegas they don't they don't gamble, do they? Not at all. Never gambled at all, cause apparently they have like slot machines right in the crapper and stuff. So, yeah. but yes, yes, yes. See, so you're a betting man, aren't you? Cause yeah, you've been married a week and you're still happy. Uh, I was married for five years to the same person. I've done my time. And I'm never getting married again. You know why? Because the presents you get for your second wedding are never as good as the ones that people bought you at your first wedding. Because nobody trusts you. <laughs> so people go out and get you gifts you can divide more easily should there be a second divorce. Then we get you stereo speakers. Each person could keep one book in. Same idea, pound of cocaine. That'd be way putting baggies came out the press. <laughs> Not that I ever did cocaine myself because it's impossible to do that drug and still remain a lady. A line? <laughs> a line for me? Just one little itty bitty one. <laughs> oh, I'm gone. Sorry. Thank you, Miss Hoover. <laughs> Got some carpets you might like to suck when the party's over. Here, take my hand. Your nose is bleeding. That's attractive. <laughs> I was married for a long time to the same person, and uh, we broke up over a little thing. <laughs> <laughs> found another pair of women's underpants stuffed in the headboard of her bed. Yeah, that's the bad news. The good news is they were 12 sizes bigger than mine. <laughs> These underpants were size 28 from Victoria's Secret. Size 28, how big a secret can they be? They follow the curvature of the earth. <laughs> so now I use them to cover the Hyundai. Anyway, we broke up and uh, felt kind of bad. I didn't have the right clothes to be single and I've been married for five years. All I had was brown things, navy blue things, beige things. Not one decent pair of underpants you can wear before you get naked with somebody new. Because after about the first or second year of marriage, fellas, we don't bother to buy the black lacy frilly ones to impress you anymore. We get the big, heavy, white cotton ones like this guy wears down here. With the pockets of the jelly beans in front, which is so festive and I try to keep full at Easter time. I've personally never seen a man buying his own underpants. I think it's, it's not your fault, fellas. It's not your fault. It's your mother's fault. Because every year at Christmas time, the minute you guys are out of diapers, your mother goes out and buys you six pairs of white cotton briefs and six pairs of tube socks. See, they're already not over there, and you guys proceed to wear these until they fall off your body or until you meet your wife, whichever one comes first. And during that period when you're a bachelor, when you're in between underwear purchasers, you have this, this scam, you have that one dress pair of underpants neatly folded in the top of your Saturday go-to-meeting underpants. And those are the ones you wear when you think you're going to get lucky. It's virtually months before we see the real ones in that bottom drawer, that Stephen King drawer. You know. So I'm not having children, and I know you're thinking, gosh, Jan, from what we've seen here so far, you've made such a terrific mother. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not having kids because I'm saving up my money to go to Europe. Oh, don't look at me like that. I'm not the only person who's looked at a child and said, mm, that could have been a car. <laughs> Thank you, that gets a standing ovation in Bellevue. It's, uh, it's not that I don't like kids, it's 
it's just that I think that if I had children of my own, somehow they would know they were not welcome in my home. <laughs> Mommy, where's my water dish? That kind of annoying thing, so I'm not having kids. I don't know, I just can't seem to find the right guy. Where do you find, you found your guy in Vegas, you know, I don't know where you find a nice man these days. I'll tell you the truth is, you could put me in a room with 400 doctors and lawyers and I'd be able to zero in on the one unemployed felon in the room. Is he a cross-dresser? Does he live on another planet? Does he have fleas and a hump on his back? I'll save him, give him to me. That's me, folks. I'm a human pest strip. <laughs> I am loser-friendly. <laughs> I need a guy I hear music. I met a guy the other day, boy, he sent up so many red flags, I felt like the fucking UN pavilion. Thank you for getting that. The men's table. Anyway, uh, no, I'm tired. I don't know where you find a good guy. Where are my single sisters out there? We have single sisters out there. Say amen. Yeah. Say two men. Why be stingy? <laughs> tired to find a good man, and the truth is, most women have given up looking for nice men, like our mama told us about. Most of us go straight to asshole. I don't know where you find the good ones. Now, where'd you find him? He's your your guy. I know you're not married because he's already. Yeah, you are married. Yeah, Three months. So, that's very nice. Three months, so uh, first anniversary is paper things, second is wood, fourth year is rubber novelty item. I don't know what three months is, but I think yeah, you, it's, got a, it's got a shot there, sure. And is it still, is it still, where did you meet him? You, okay. So you met when you were very young? Yes. And then why did you marry someone else? Because you obviously knew her and then married someone else. So you couldn't have been that perfect. Oh, you both married someone else, and then you weeded them out. <laughs> that weeding process is the tricky part because it can cost you a lot of fucking money, can't it? Yeah. 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 My ex husband sucked a, a house up his nose. Uh, bitter me? Oh, no. Of course not. I don't know where you find a nice guy, but you don't find him in the single bars, which is a dog pound of humanity. Everyone who everyone else couldn't paper train is in there. Pretty much a human garage sale, isn't it? Go to the single bars, guys look good, low cut shirts, gold chains, chest two pays. But sometimes we get you home and we get you unwrapped, fellas. And some of you come with some weird little options. <laughs> Ever get one of these guys with mass hair on his back? Sometimes with the matching epaulettes on each shoulder, mm, isn't that appealing? Like he hasn't quite evolved yet. I always would say, hey, you, hey, job man, missing link. Call me when your frontal lobe recedes. When you drop that prehensile tail, we'll find you a decent fitting pair of pants. I mean, surely this man's knuckles dragging in your driveway should be the tip off. <laughs> Same thing for the man, though. You meet a woman in a bar, we have makeup on, cosmetics, the great equalizer, along with Jose Cuervo Gold Tequila, the other great equalizer. We have makeup on in the morning, but in a totally different configuration. <laughs> Somehow during the evening, we melted. Our lips are up here, our lashes are on our neck, and look what we've done to your pillowcases. You guys have a Picasso painting suitable for framing. But let's say this, you guys have no day at the beach in the morning either with that little bit of spit that turns to crystals in the corner of your mouth while you're snoring. <sighs> Looks like a slug just exited, you got a little stalactite form in there. Hey, have some pride, wake up early, and clean that off before we can see it. Because that's what women do. It doesn't matter how late you guys keep us out dancing. 6.30 in the morning, our eternal alarm goes off. And while you're still quietly sleeping, we're in the bathroom. Reconstruction's already taken place. Then we sneak back into bed and pretend like we've looked like that all night long. Some of you guys even buy it, too. <laughs> Poor dumb zipper heads. <laughs> so I'm single now, kind of a party girl, kind of a wild child, kind of a... Ooh, slut is what I am, actually. <laughs> Don't even bother to have sheets on the bed anymore. I have a big giant roll of paper like they have at the gynecologist's office. Well, rip the days off, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and see, then you don't have to do laundry, so it's double laundry. Don't get me wrong, we love you, man, and we need you. Is he single? Come here. We need you. Let me have your cheek. Just a little cheek, bitch. We need you. We need you to fix things for us. <laughs> Where would we be without men? We'd be in a room full of broken shit. <laughs> Just give that to me, little lady. I'll fix it for you. Which is why I now have a toaster with a spin cycle on it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we need you men to drive our cars. You notice how we always let you get behind the wheel? We don't 
don't even argue because you are the trailblazers, you are the pathfinders, you are the scouts. And if there's a way to add a half an hour onto a fucking shortcut, you'll find a way to do it! <laughs> Will a man ever stop when he can actually find where he's going and ask for simple directions? Oh no, that would be way too easy! That's why Moses wandered around like an idiot in the desert for 40 years! He was too stubborn to stop at a Texaco station and say, hey, where's the Sinai? That's why Lewis and Clark hired Sacagawea, an Indian maiden, to tow their boat along the Columbia River. That's why they're putting women into outer space. So that somebody has the presence of mind in orbit to ask, hey, is it just me or are we still going around in circles? <laughs> but we love you and we need you. Because men are good at fixing things. I have a house now, so I'm trying to date uh, contractors, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I have a roommate, and she's kind of like Marilyn Monroe. She talks just like her. She looks just like her. She's running the faucet. She's washing the dishes. And she said, you know, Jen, somebody in this household is going to have to sleep with a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> she also said to me, you know, Jen, the problem with you is you think like a man. And I said, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. What did you say? <laughs> Thank you. Good night.